Hello and welcome to Gearock Farms. In today's video, we're gonna be doing some fencing. We got a small section in the back 40 we gotta replace near a pond. We're gonna take you guys along with us, um, show you how we'd go about fixing a fence or um, you know replacing a section that needs to be replaced. To start off, my dad, he's gonna get uh, some tools ready and put them on the other four-wheeler. I'm gonna get this four-wheeler started up, hooked up to the trailer, and then we gotta take a couple posts up there with us, so. So this field we're in right now is one of our um, kind of our rotationally grazed fields where we'll take hay off of it for first crop and then uh, pasture it the rest of the year. See how the old fence is starting to lean downhill. The bank's kind of coming away. Well, we're going to bring it up the hill and then kind of lean it uphill. So we got all the posts in the hole. I don't know if you guys caught that, but my dad, he came up here and he dug these a couple days ago, and it's so wet that there's uh, water in the bottom of the hole. Owen got a little wet. The rest of us lucked out, but there was a bit of water down there. It came splashing up. It's clean mud. We don't have dirty mud here. We got clean mud. We got to pack these posts. And this, this clay, it's so sticky and muddy, so... If I had a choice, like sometimes we get, you know, we dig out, we got this heavy wet clay like around the barnyard when we we're gonna really want to plant them posts for a gate. I'll like I'll like bring like a five gallon pail of gravel along or something you can dump in. It really seats it in nice, you know. This clay ain't gonna run down them holes sort the of darn, but it won't matter up here. Or sometimes they got a sand bank nearby, you get a few scoops of sand, get it down in the bottom of the post, and you can pack it in real nice and tight and leave your clay up near the top. This stuff's some pretty sticky stuff. But we're gonna kinda push them uphill a little bit as we plant them. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get a whole lot to run down the hole. Now we get resourceful, so we use the handle for packing, which... Okay, you wanna start re staples and stuff? So you don't wanna lose any, any hardware in the pasture. Like in the woods or something, it's not that big a deal if a staple or something ends up flying off into the leaves. Cows don't nibble, but there's not really any grass there. We came to this farm, there was a lot of old fence and fences. We were moving and there was netting. So then we were you know, taking these fences out and that old rusty wire. Breaking, pieces of breaking off of 
it's like needles in the haystack. And then the cows, you wouldn't think they'd pick that up. You really wouldn't think so. You'd think that would fall on the ground they would, or they would spit it out if it got in their mouth. So we started finding hardware in our cattle. Like the vet would say, well, that's hardware. She won't eat. And if she didn't eat, of course, that's bad news. Well, my dad's uh, packing in them new posts. We're taking this old post out. So I'm taking the hardware off, all the staples, and how I'm doing it is I'm using this, uh, this fencing players or fencing tool, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I'm taking this hook end and I'm kind of prying it or hitting it into the back side of that clip and then yanking it out. This uh, tool is kind of designed to be a multi-use, multi-purpose fencing tool. So this is how I've been doing it. Kind of get wedged behind and then pull it out. And then yeah, like my dad says, you want to make sure you don't lose this stuff. All right. Yeah, put it in your pocket or something, or a bucket. Make sure you don't lose it. Yeah, so these are little clips that are used for T-posts that I'm undoing right now. These more or less just wrap around on there. This is all they're doing, holding the wire to the T-post. Same there, make sure you don't lose any of that stuff. You'll pay for it down the road. Instead of uh, cutting the barbed wire, we're trying to find the splices in the fence that are the closest to where we're working here. That way uh, we don't have to cut wire. We can just add on the pieces we need. It's just simply just raveled around itself is all that this is. Day out here. You know, these are used railroad ties, and there's one that was cracked off. Now, if we don't just replace them when we when we're able to, pretty soon they got four or five of them broke off, and you're you know, he's gonna put that in upside down, which is good because yeah, because this will now when you pull it out of the ground, it will rot. See, right here is where you're like that, that is only rotted right at the ground. Right, right in the first four or five inches. So that's where all the bacteria is. You go down further, see like this post from like here to the to where there was the original bottom is like new yet. So right in here. So what we're gonna do is stick it in upside down. So rule of thumb is once they're planted for like four or five, six years, this was maybe 10 years already. If we put, put it right back in where it was, right in here will rot off like almost within a year or two. Super quick. Super quick, yeah. It's just like it's got exposed or something. You expose it to air or something. Yeah. And we learn it from experience. It's just, it's a given. So if you're reusing a post, throw it in the other way. Throw it the other way if you can, yep. Really doesn't make much difference. There we are. Now, uh, I can pack that one.
Put on the upside of that one. This treated pole. Whip it over the top. So when you pull it tight, that, that marks where you put your T-post. Then you put T-posts in because you don't want wires where you're trying to pound it down. Yeah, and then, then you go work from your bottom up. Otherwise, you end up with a connect. So we got all the old uh, post, T-post and everything moved. We got all the wire taken off, and now we're going to splice in some new pieces here to connect our fence up. We're going to use the fence stretcher and try to try to get some of that slack out and get it enough where we can splice it together. We might have enough, so this would be a professional finger pincher. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to try very hard to pinch your finger. And then there's this little hook here that keeps it there. Some of the first ones didn't have that. There's better fence stretchers. I was watching some guys out west. They got some interesting tools out there. Now the thing is we don't want to do because this is the bottom wire. We're right in the dip here. Push it down on that pole a little further. There. Somewhere. Sometimes we put an extra little piece in the dip. See now if you get all four wires tight. That puts a lot of pressure on that post that turns. So all the wood posts are kind of where the fence turns more. The T posts are more kind of where it's just straight. It doesn't have to do much more than hold the wires evenly across. Because on this farm, as crooked as this farm is, there's really no such thing as a straight fence on this farm. We're kind of going contour to the fields and the land and ditches, whatever we're maneuvering around. So, so what this is, is like he was explaining this hay field we fence them out of that until after you take the first cutting off but and then everything else ends up being kind of you could call it wasteland if we weren't grazing it so we're able to keep the brush down and get some grass out and feed some cattle with it make some beef see these right there and there i got a lot of scars and all my arms from when I was a boy and learning the hard way when wire breaks what it can do to you. But we healed up. A lot of experience in them scars. I mean there's neater ways to make splices but you can unravel each strand and intertwine them together and and it looks better too. done it like this it just takes more time to do it the other way besides if you want to go more by the book there we go well we got a couple of staples here now you see on here these these little barbs on here and for these pine poles I like to use these long ones with these little barbs that kind of helps it from sneaking back out and you always put your staple in a little bit at an angle you don't want to put it straight up and down like that because it follows the grain. You want to put it a little like that. Then we got these shorter ones. Now, when I started here, what did we have? We had white oak and we split the posts. I, I made them like Dad used to make them or like our grandpas used to make them. So then they would dry out really hard. Sometimes we'd pour waste oil over the pile. That would help preserve them some. But you could never get a staple like that to go in. It would go in part way and then just bend over. So then we'd buy smaller, sta shorter staples. So for instance, that railroad tie, we're going to use these shorter staples. I mean, these will go in part way and bend over. But anyway, they hold just as good or better because it's oak versus pine. We don't drive it all the way home. We leave it out just a little bit until we get all of them in so that the wire can slip a little one way or the other if it needs to be as we adjust that wire on the post because we got all these things that are not even just all the way. We've had places where it's so crooked that we can't just go all the way to the end of the fence and stretch the wire and then just go down and put it all on. We have to go in, in increments, you know, someplace in a dip someplace we patch on and hook a post and stretch it just to that far and then we just keep going further because otherwise you end up one spot where the wire will be 
20 feet in the air in the next spot you can't pull it off the ground so you got to kind of keep adjusting it as you go until you get to the end there's a lot of tricks to all this stuff and i got a feeling everybody that's did any fence has probably got all sorts of ideas rolling around in their head as they're putting this stuff together and then the other thing is is once we get all four on sometimes you look at it and think it needs to be adjusted a little more so now like here okay so the cattle on the lower side will be the ones we're trying to keep them out of the field because once they're in the field they'll still have the, the spot on the outside there's no reason for them to go this way they'll sooner want to go that way so you have to look at the fact of heights of the wires where the side that the cattle are mostly on sometimes you got cattle on both sides of the fence so we're going to go four barbs We've done five heck down by the buildings where the calf pasture we put netting on. And it's all to keep these cattle where you want them to be. And it just makes farming a lot more fun when everything is kind of working according to plan. Yeah, fencing sure beats uh, chasing cattle. So, oh God, any day. Exactly. And actually, I kind of like fencing. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but I like fencing because it's kind of a stress-free thing. You usually go on days when you can't hay or you can't do other stuff anyway, really. And you're out here where there are no salesmen going to find us out here. <laughs> okay, we can get our T-posts, so we just evenly space our T-posts in between here. and. the better tool because it's the one that's all shined up that everyone's been using. The ones that aren't so friendly to use look like new yet. And we were always taught to pinch it shut on both sides so in case the staple breaks or something wire breaks the staple stays with the wire. It doesn't get lost in the grass. And then uh, he's gonna throw a extra little piece in here. A lot of these dips like this if we try to force the wires down too far, we get such a dip in the fence that it, all it does is it pulls the T-post out of the ground. So we're just gonna wrap an extra something in here that's kind of a waste piece anyway. Sometimes we'll use like an older, rusty piece, just something better than nothing kind of thing. Because cattle will go to the lowest spot, and put their head underneath and crawl through if they really wanted to. Yeah, once their nose goes through, then they'll Pretty much just keep going ahead. Let's see. Um, no way out. It's just a little more preventative symptom. And then, too, if a, a calf is born up here, too, this will help prevent them from getting through the fence.
right, so we finished the fence. It looks really nice. It was a great day to fence with the family. Dad taught us some stuff. I hope you guys learned some stuff. So uh, we're gonna head back down to the yard, get everything cleaned up here. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos. Also, stay tuned for a video about um, the toolboxes on these four-wheelers and the fencing supplies that's uh, in them.